Hi guys, welcome to the 8th episode of Mountain Bike Rear Suspension Series. Today we will talk about suspension sensitivity and I will show you a very easy and quick method to just quantify precisely your suspension sensitivity or shock sensitivity. For that you will just need a simple instrument, a weight scale. To understand sensitivity we need to understand the concept of breakaway force. So what is the breakaway force? The breakaway force is the minimum force that you need to apply to the suspension in order to the suspension starts compressing. In fact, to have a sensitive suspension you must need to have a suspension with zero breakaway force. But the reality is that the rear suspension does not have a zero breakaway force. As you can see in the theoretical graphs that brands show you about the force needed to compress a shock, or even a force needed to compress the, the rear wheel of, of your bike, you will see that these, these kind of graphs showing you the force versus travel, they always start at point zero zero. That means that, accordingly to these graphs, just a tiny small amount of force that you apply in the suspension, uh, it will start compressing the suspension. But how do you think? Do you think that this is correct? Do you think that our suspension needs just a tiny amount of force to start compressing? Or do you think that our suspension requires a substantial amount of force to start compressing? So this is why I, show, I will show you the test with the weight scale. So basically we will see, we will see uh, how much force do we, we need to apply in the rear wheel to start compressing the suspension. And we, we, you will find that in most of the cases, for most of the shocks in the market, you need more than zero kilos of force uh, at the suspension to start compressing the suspension. So now I will show you how to do the test. You basically put the weight scale be below the, the rear wheel and you compress, uh, you cycle the suspension to get the feeling uh, of the suspension and then you compress just the tiniest amount as possible, like 5 millimeters at maximum. You just compress a tiny bit of the suspension and remain stable at that position to the, in order to the weight scale read the correct value of, of, of the force. So let's see how to do this. Okay, so as you saw in the video, I need about 16 kilograms of force to start compressing my suspension. I know that you are thinking that those 16 kilograms are because I compressed the shock about 2 millimeters of distance. But I guarantee you that these 16 kilograms are not because of compressing the spring 2 millimeters. In fact, by compressing this spring in my bike 2 millimeters, only requires about 4 kilograms of force. So the real, the real breaking, breakaway force of my bike is indeed 16 minus 4 or meaning 12 kilograms of force. I will show you uh, the same experiment without the spring to, to convince you that the breaking away force that I am measuring is not 0 but 12 kilograms of force. So check it out. So as you saw, my, the real breakaway force of my downhill bike is about 12 kilograms of force, which is a quite low value, but it's not zero. The, the perfect value will be zero, 
but I will show you in a future video that most of the, the shocks that are in the market are not able to, to give you a zero breakaway force. There are only a couple of shocks that could get something similar to zero, like the Vivid and the DVO Jade, for instance, but we will talk about that in a future episode. Now let's do the same test on my enduro bike, which is a specialized pitch, and let's see how, if the breakaway force is the same or not. So as you saw in the video, my uh, specialized pitch needs about 40, 40, 40 kilograms of force as a breakaway force. So this is a, in fact a huge amount of breakaway force. And the result of this is that this suspension is not so sensitive as my downwheel suspension of the specialized big ATs. In fact, if you do the drop test between the two bikes, you will see a complete difference between the two. And I will talk about the drop test in a future video. So, why does some rear suspensions have a really high breakaway forces and others have a quite low breakaway force around 10-15 kilograms? So, why, why is this, this, this difference? There are many factors that can contribute to this difference on breakaway force. For instance, friction in the linkage of the frame, okay, the bearings and so on. Secondly, the, the damper per se, the IFP pressure can increase the breakaway force and we will talk about this later and I will show you that in most of the shocks in the market uh, they have a breakaway force uh, from the damper, from the IFP pressure. And third and most important uh, thing is the preload of the spring. So in the episode 3 I show you that increasing the preload of a coil spring increases the breakaway force, so it decreases the sensitivity. But do air shocks also have a preload force? Yes, they do. Air shocks uh, produce a very high amount of preload uh, force and indeed they have a very high a breakaway force. This is why the manufacturers created the negative chamber in the air shocks. So by creating a negative air chamber in the air shocks and by equalizing the pressures between the, the main chamber and the negative chamber you can indeed reduce the amount of preload of the shock and you can decrease the breakaway force to a very low uh, amount of, of force. For, for coil shocks it's very easy, you just need to decrease the preload of the spring and the spring when, when it's not preloaded it does not produce any static force so you don't have to worry about negative air chambers and so on. Just before finishing the video, just one more thing, because I know that many of you will ask me that. Does it make sense to have a 10 or 15 kilograms of breakaway force, considering that when you sit on the bike you already produce like 50 kilograms of force at the rear wheel? Does this breakaway force make sense? Yes, of course it makes sense, because most of you think on the rider weight in the static uh, perspective, but when you are riding the trail in a very bumpy and rocky section, the weight load on the rear wheel is not constant, it changes a lot between 0 and probably 80 or 100 kilograms of force. So this is why the suspension works not only above the, the sag, but also below the sag, okay, the, the so-called negative travel. So the, the answer is yes, the breakaway force affects a lot usually the suspension performance, especially in bumpy and very rocky terrain, okay? So a zero breakaway force is the perfect value for a suspension. And no, 
a zero breakaway force will not affect your pedaling efficiency. Why? Because you pedal at the sack position. Okay? This is the pedaling zone at the sack position. The breakaway force only affects the initial position, the initial compression uh, of the initial travel of the suspension. So the, break, the zero breakaway force will not affect your pedaling efficiency and will increase a lot the, the sensitivity of the suspension over very uh, rocky and very bumpy terrains. Okay, so this was my contribute. Uh, I hope you liked the test. Please do the experiment in your home and post in the comments uh, what was your result, what was your breakaway force, and please post your, your shock and uh, what type of bike do you have. So let's see which one of us have the lowest breakaway force in uh, their rear suspension. So see ya guys and stay tuned.